Food prices are already skyrocketing. Some, a little of this comes from inflation caused by runaway government spending over the past two years. You know how they like to spend all their money. Some is from supply chain issues, but a new problem is rearing its ugly head, folks. And the government officials seem as likely to make it worse as to make it better. Now here in America, is our media just stupid or turning a blind eye because they do not want to talk and warn you great people of this country about what is coming. We are headed for a major food shortages all around the world. And we are not going to be left out of it, folks, in this country. The invasion by Russia into Ukraine, mobile supply chains for food is going to cause a global crisis that will affect millions and millions of people. And here's why. It's going to affect us here in America also. The agricultural mayhem that's going to happen here in the United States is off the charts. Russia and Ukraine, and I don't know when this actually happened or when they got this title, but Russia and Ukraine is known now as the breadbasket of the world. Wasn't that us just not too long ago? When did our farmers stop being the breadbasket winners of the world? The United States has long been the breadbasket of the world as large swaths of fertile farmland and cutting edge agricultural innovations have enabled it to both feed its own people here in America and all the populations across the globe. We've been doing it for a very long time. However, in case you all didn't know, since 2017, America's agricultural leadership has been facing a series of tests from China and Russia. Both countries, Russia and Ukraine, are responsible for a quarter of the international trade. A fifth of corn and 12% of all calories traded globally. What we are facing with cutting off just 8% of our oil from Russia, look what happened with the gas prices. If you think that's not coming with food prices and food shortages, you're all mistaken. Much like the impact on energy prices on the U.S. from the war, the U.S. does not import much grain from Russia or Ukraine. But this is where it gets really interesting, folks. The disruption will create imbalances in stockpiles around the world. Ukraine and Russia re represent around and between 10 to 20 percent respectively, of the global wheat production and nearly 30% of all wheat exports come from these. One thing to remember, Russia produces 11% of the world's wheat and Ukraine produces 3% of the world's wheat. These countries make up a larger proportion of global exports. All right, now also, Russia accounts for 19% of the global wheat export market and Ukraine at 9%. Ukraine is also a major corn exporter also folks, accounting for 14% of all exports. One of the main things that we also get from Russia and Ukraine, not just food supplies around the rest of the world, but we have access to fertilizer. And unfortunately, fertilizer, Russia has banned the export of that. So we're not getting any of that right now. And it's probably going to be a long time before we do. The government here is trying to help the companies that are making this to make more. But that's going to take years, as they are saying. This is going to choke off our farmers. And farmers in the South are now saying they can't get fertilizer. And if they can get fertilizer, they can't afford the fertilizer. The UN has warned the global food prices could jump from 8%, which it already has happened, if you haven't been to the store lately, to as high as 20% around the world. That's going to make it very difficult for a lot of people to afford just to walk into the grocery store. The media is not telling you 
these things and why is beyond me. We don't see any of this kind of stuff talk, being talked about on all the national networks anywhere. The issue is that farmland without fertilizer is vastly less productive, which is a known fact. Without fertilizer, corn and wheat yields in the United States would decline by more than 40%. But as prices promises to go much higher, farmers will either have to skimp on fertilizer or raise prices on their own products by a lot, folks. Human costs have been even greater. After the pandemic's outbreak, we have achieved more upper middle class income status people today. Half a million people have sunk back into poverty because of the inflation, the rising prices and everything else. With the threat of inflation, war, soaring fuel prices and shrunken food supplies and supply chain issues, the world is facing a catastrophic fate. And once again, those responsible are unlikely to pay the price. Regardless, the world's policymakers need to take a less casual approach to the well-being of the world's population. That very much includes those in the Biden administration. Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack, response to concerns about fertilizer and food shortages, quote, maybe sacrifices are necessary, unquote. You can rest assured, folks, that Vilsack won't be the one making any type of sacrifices anywhere in his near future. To make matters worse, even if the war was to stop today, the damage has already been done. Millions of people have fled Ukraine. This is their planning season that they're coming into right now. The farmlands have been destroyed by all the bombs and everything else, and there are no people left to tend the land anyways. And Russia has been cut off from doing business and selling their products to the global market, to the global world. So whatever they do plant and whatever they do harvest themselves, if they don't consume it themselves, it's just going to spoil and rot. So what can we do, folks? What is the answer? I really don't know how I can tell you people how important it is for you to be prepping and for you to be ready. There's a lot of stuff that's coming down the pike. This is going to affect all of us, every person in this world, in some way, shape, or form is going to be affected by this. So please do your part and get out there and prep and get ready for what could be coming. It is very, very important that you do this for you and your family. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you all for joining me on this video today. I want to make sure that you all are staying safe. You are keeping prepping. You're prepping as much as you possibly can. You're topping off your preps. You're doing whatever you can do to prepare for this crisis that is coming. So until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.